Welcome to a new Interact Pro commissioning movie. In this movie you will learn how to program a system and how to decommission it. In the end of the movie I will show you some new features that were released since my previous movie. Ok, now let's log in as an expert and start building a project from within the app. Press create projects, you fill in the project details uh, just like we did before. And at the end press create to create the project. Press the setup button and then press create network. Here you can choose if you want to use a gateway. If you don't know what that means, you can press on the information button to get extra details. Here you can see what the difference is between having a gateway and not having a gateway. For this example, we don't use a gateway. The app automatically brings us to the grouping instructions and explains what groups and zones are and what lights in a group are what group control is, and what lights in a zone do, and how daylight regulation works. I strongly recommend you to read them through thoroughly at least once, so that you really understand what groups and zones are, what they do, and how controls like sensors and switches are controlling the entire group and not the zone, and how daylight is regulated inside zones only. Over here you can see the working of the chevron menu. You need to press got it. Once you did that, you can proceed programming. Now I want to create a network. But it forces me to unlock the other networks if I want to create a new network. You can see the pop-up again explaining that this network is now locked and you cannot use it on another device. Now I go back into the first network again and here I create a new group, the meeting room. If this message disturbs you, you can swipe it up and it will disappear. When sliding a group to the left, I can rename the group, or test it, or delete it from there. I am now renaming the group to meeting room 1, 2, 3. I will show you the working of the test button a little bit later in the movie. In order to show you how to add the lights, I need to turn on the power of my devices. I enter the group and press add lights. The phone will now start searching for lights that are nearby in Bluetooth range. This takes about 10 seconds. This message explains that you can pull down the list to refresh the light list. In the list there is one device which is not a Bluetooth device, it's a Zigbee device. So we cannot add that one, so we shouldn't try it. I'll show you how to add Zigbee devices a bit later. But the other devices can be blinked by clicking on them. And when you press the button, that light will be added to the group. If you have lights, with built-in sensors, you can use this infrared remote control. This is a very simple version which just has two buttons, a zero and a plus sign. In order to add the lights, you need to press the plus button and you will see that the light starts blinking and your app shows that something is being added. When the light is successfully added to the group, 
your app will make a little sound and show you a green check mark. When using the infrared remote control, stand right underneath the light, point straight at it to avoid assigning the wrong lights. And don't walk around during the assignment, as there is a one-to-one -one Bluetooth communication between your phone and the light. Just be patient. I have now added all the lights to the group, so I press the test button to check if everything is turning off and on again. There is also one light at the left hand side, which you don't see on the screen, but that was also reacting. Let's delete that one a bit later. I can also show you what happens when you pull down the list. It will refresh the light list. As I mentioned before, there is one light too many in this group, which is 99F4. I'm going to unassign that light from my group. I try to blink the light and I see that the correct light is blinking. So I'm going to unassign it because it is not the one that should be in the group. If you press the unassign button, you will see that the light appears inside your network as an unassigned light. So it still exists in your network, but you can simply delete it from the project or add it to the group. From here, let me show you what happens if you press add. You see that you can add it to the group or create a new group. But now that's deleted from the project. Some of the lights that I have put in the group should in fact do some daylight regulation. So I need to move those lights into a zone. Let's create a zone and call it window. Those lights have a built-in sensor and I want to use them in that zone. From here you can add lights, which are new lights that haven't been discovered or move lights from the group. I'm going to move the lights away from the group and move them into the zone. You can use the select all button or select a couple of lights. And now they have moved into the zone. Please note that you can only move lights from a group to a zone and not from a zone to a group. If you need to move a light from a group to another group, you have to unassign the light from the group or you delete the light from the group and then you go to the desired group and add it there. I now press add lights to a zone to discover new lights. And I'm going to add the light, which is the one on the left hand side into the project so that I can also show you some tunable white features that have been added to the system as well. Let's test and see if the lights in the zone are responding properly. So now you can see the lights in the zone are turning on and they are turning off. We have now added all the lights and we should now go to the controls tab and see what we can do over there. It tells you that after applying your settings, you need to deploy them before you can control the lights. I now press on sensors and you will see that over there, there are a couple of exclamation marks. And if you press on the exclamation mark, you will see that the sensor isn't active. The standard light behavior is manual on, manual off. So if you want to do something with the motion and daylight sensing, you need to press select and then turn on occupancy and daylight sensing. In the case you're using luminaires with built-in sensors, you can also see turn the group on off per luminaire. And that is the granular dimming feature. This feature allows lights that see motion to turn on to task level, while the rest of the lights remain in background level. In this example, I only turn the group on and off. You can see that the exclamation marks have now disappeared. Now let's add another sensor to the group. A green power sensor. There are various types of sensors. This example has a daylight sensor inside it, similar to the ones that are built in.
and this sensor only does motion detection. At the back of the green power sensors you can see a reset button and a sensitivity knob. Now let's add the sensor. The app tells me to remove the tab, but this is a sensor which is already used, so I can just move on. It now tells me to press the button in the front of the sensor to make it identify itself. And when you see that, instead of a green LED, a red one is blinking, you need to reset it by pressing the reset button in the back. That's not the case for now, so I can just press the button in the front of the sensor to start identifying. The sensor was already reset. You can see that the green LED is flashing. Now you need to pay close attention to the green LED when it is being successfully added. You can see that the green LED blinks twice quickly. Green means successfully commissioned. Two times red means commissioning has failed. This sensor has been successfully added and has been given the name of the MAC address. Be careful by pressing the save button here if you would already have chosen a different behavior because then you would need to press the cross button. If you want to know a bit more about light behavior or group behavior, you can press the information button in the top. I now press the cross button in the top because I have already configured my behavior. If I would want to add the other sensor, which is uh, on the left hand side of the suitcase, this one, Unfortunately, it is incompatible with the lights that have integrated sensors. You can only link them to devices without an internal sensor. The sensor that I am showing now is an IP65 sensor, and you might see that there is a cover on top of it. You can remove that cover or move it around to the area that you don't want the sensor to detect any motion. This same cover also exists on other sensors. But you might to look a bit closer with your nail, you can open the cover up and then you can rotate it towards the area you don't want the sensor to detect any motion. The built-in sensors also have a cover and you can see that in my hand. Every new luminaire has such a cover. You can also move it around to cover the area that you don't want the sensor to discover a motion. And as you can see, I am now putting it back the other way around so that the sensor is no longer obstructed. Now let's move on to the switches and add some switches to the network. The first one is a single rocker switch. This is an old type switch, a UAD8450 switch. They are no longer produced but they have now been replaced by the UAD8470 switches. And this is a single button switch, and the one on the right hand side is the double rocker switch, the 8480. The example that I'm picking up now is the SWS200 switch. It's only used in North America, and it's a four button switch. In North America, they also sell kinetic powered devices, which is this one. And it's always supplied with both single and double rockers. Now let's add this single rocker switch. That's the most difficult one to add. Quite often, people make a mistake with the confirmation step. Let's start by removing the cover. The app tells you that you have to watch the zero and the one symbol. Some people forget to take away the rocker and they do see the zero and the one, but when you want to add the switch, you see that you cannot press the buttons. So you will discover soon enough that you need to remove that part and then you press the buttons that you need to press according to the app. So use two hands. You now need to press this for 10 seconds. And when you release the buttons, you will need to do the confirmation step. This is the confirmation step. 
You now use your right hand, for example, to press those two buttons and your thumb to be able to really press. And then you use your left hand to click at the top of the switch. And that was the confirmation step. Unfortunately, there is no way that the app is telling you that that part has succeeded. So you just need to be aware of this. You now reassemble the switch and when you place back the cover, pay attention that the zero and one also correspond. When you add the switch, if you notice that your switch isn't working, then it's most probably the part where something went wrong. Now press the confirmation button and then give the switch a name. This is a new feature that allows you to test the switch assignment first. So it allows you to see if it works before you really assign it and deploy your settings. As you can see, it works when I press the on button and then I can press yes. Of course, if I want the entire group to work, then I need to activate the controls by deploying my settings. Let's continue with another switch. I'm taking the double rocker switch. This one is much easier to identify. You just need to make sure that you're holding it upright. And when you press the button for 10 seconds, the one that is displaying in your app, it can be a different one for your network, of course. And after those 10 seconds, you confirm by pressing those two buttons, and that's it. Now you press the confirm button in the app, you give the switch a name, and then you can do the test like we did with the two button switch. The next step is configuring the switch. There are two pages. Single press, where you can configure the two buttons on the left, and what the buttons on the right are doing. The other page explains what happens if you hold the buttons pressed. If you press these buttons, your tunable white lights get cooler and warmer. The buttons on the right will make your lights shine brighter and dimmer. In the single press page, the buttons on the left are configurable. You can create a new scene or choose on and off. And in this example, we are going to create a new scene. When I move the slider, you can see that the intensity is changing. The color temperature slider is shown over here. I have a tunable white luminaire over here. You can see its effect via this little dot over there. When I move the slider, you can now see that the color temperature becomes warmer. And if I move the slider to the right, the color temperature gets cooler. The lighting in the zone can also be regulated like this, and individual lights can also be controlled. It's a bit hard to see here, but they are changing. If I turn it off, you can clearly see that. And before saving, of course, I need to give the scene a name. I then press Create. Now I can do the same thing with the second button. I give the scene a name. I change the color temperature. I can also type in the value like this. Here I choose to turn off the entire zone. As you can see, the two lights that are linked to that zone are both turning off. I now save the configuration. If I want to change something to my configuration, I can still go back into that configuration by pressing the change configuration button. 
let me quickly navigate through the pages again so that you can see what the meaning of those buttons are. Let me now go back to the switches and add the North American type of switch, the four button uh, SWS200 switch, which is the one over here. The app tells me to remove the tab, but like the sensor, that was already done because it's a switch that I already used before. I now need to identify the switch. It is straightforward, I just need to keep uh, those buttons pressed for 10 seconds. If the switch was already configured before, you need to reset it by using a paper clip. The LED on the switch was blinking a couple of times and that is a confirmation that the switch has joined. I can now give the switch a name and add it to the system. And here I press later. Please note that when you add another similar four button switch to the same group, they will both have the same configuration when pressing the buttons on the left hand side. You might notice the deploy settings button. It is always important to deploy your settings when you're done with the configuration. Now we are first going through the light behavior screen a little bit. When pressing the pen symbol, you will see a nice overview of the values of various settings and their meaning. Here you can also make changes. And when making changes, you see immediate feedback from your lights. The task level is the level at which your lights turn on when you entered the room. Or when you turn the lights on with a switch. The lights remain on that level during the whole time when no presence is detected. When you leave the room for at least the duration of the whole time, your system goes to background level, which in this case is 20%. This light level remains on during one minute. The vacant level is zero, which means that when there is nobody, the lights will go off. In the bottom of the screen, you can also press copy settings. This allows you to copy the group behavior settings to other groups. And when you create a new group, you have the option to paste these settings to that group. Let's take a closer look at the behavior lights, auto on, auto off. This behavior only works with devices with an integrated sensor. You can configure a dwell time. When you enter a room, lights turn on at the background level, but the light that detects your presence for at least 10 seconds will go to task level. When you would have left before the dwell time expires, the light will remain at the background level for the duration of the prolonged time and then go to the vacant level again. Let me show you what happens when I copy the settings and create a new group. You can see that a check mark appears at the copy light behavior. If you don't like to copy these settings, you just uncheck. For now, I leave it like this. When going into the controls tab and then into light behavior, you can see that the settings have been copied. This can save you a lot of time, especially if you have many rooms that need to have similar behavior. I'm now deleting this group again. All the changes that were made during my previous actions, the lights are still not aware of. I need to deploy the settings. Let's do that now. The lights will receive the configuration and then they will start listening to the switches and sensors and the behavior will also be applied. This makes the system robust and allows to work without a base station like a gateway. I will be speeding up this part of the video because it takes about 8 seconds per light for a foundation project or a project without a gateway, but it can take up to 1 minute per light if you're using a gateway. So please bear with me. At the end of the deployment, you get a green check mark telling you that everything is okay. If there were any issues during the deployment, just redo the deployment or use troubleshooting options. Let's now go check the switches. You can see they are working. 
You can turn on and off the lights and you can press and hold the buttons. And as you can see, it dims the light. The two scene buttons were not configured, so that's why they are not working. It's a four button North American switch and it's a different type than the other four button switch. It will need its proper button mapping that you can do over here. In normal situations, you don't mix North American switches with other four button switches. This is the other four button switch we are using in the rest of the world. I had configured that one and it is turning on and off the lights and it can activate the scenes that I had configured. After finishing the deployment, you can do the daylight calibration. By doing that, you click on the calibration screen and then you read the instructions carefully. And then you press on got it. Now select the zone you want to calibrate. You can set the light level for the zone to whatever level you prefer. I advise not going below 20% or else the lights are very dim. As you can see, you move the slider, release it, and it will automatically dim the lights in that zone to that level. Then press calibrate. Now you need to press continue and it takes about 6 minutes to calibrate. This can happen in the background, so in the meantime you can just do other things. Let's synchronize everything with the cloud right now. And once that is done, we can navigate back to our project overview. And here we can also unlock our networks so that other people can also commission the network. Again, we navigate back one screen. And now we can go into the user panel to invite other experts if you like. That expert will then be able to do commissioning on that project as well. You might notice that users cannot be invited to this project. And that is because this is a project without any gateways. If you would encounter issues in your system, you can always navigate back to your network and into groups again and have a look at Luminaire level. You can tap on the three dot menu and it gives you some options. Let me press the info button. The system will now fetch the information about the light and from there you can see details like the name, the latest deployment, the firmware version, etc. Other options in the menu are moving lights to a zone, unassigned from the group, delete lights and troubleshoot. Troubleshooting reinstalls all the information into the luminaire. It consists of three steps. The first one is getting information. It's basically doing the same thing as what we saw before when pressing the info button. A second step redeploys the entire information back into the light and finally it reboots the light. And you can see that because lights are turning on again. When SNS or SNH210 devices are rebooting, you don't see them blinking. I have obviously been manipulating the lights during their calibration. So the calibration, even though it is not showing that it was completed, must have failed. Of course, this is something you need to be aware of. So don't change the lights when you are calibrating them. High on trim is another topic I'd like to point out. In fact, Moving the high-end trim slider is the new 100% level that you are setting. I always compare this with a DJ set. It is the master slider of the volume. Lights will never shine brighter than that value. Note that you cannot go lower than 70% and that is because the driver simply don't support lower values. The slider dims the light linear to the eye and not to the energy of the light. This energy decreases logarithmic. In other words, you need relative low energy to perceive already quite some light. Now we're done with the commissioning and let's go back to the project 
and log out from all our networks. Just unlock and then go to the control screen. You can enter the rooms that you had created and from there you can turn on and off the lights. This takes about 8 seconds for your phone to establish a Bluetooth connection with the lights and then you can start using them. The auto button starts the default on off behavior that you have programmed in the light behavior settings. Like when the system would do if you would enter the room while it was vacant. The temperature slider changes the color temperature and this slider changes the intensity of the lights in the group. And this button in the top turns the entire group on and off. Another feature, which I didn't show you yet, is the ability to reboot lights in a group. This feature is only available when no gateway is connected to the network. This allows lights, which are non-responsive, to reboot them, instead of power cycling them, which has the same effect. You press the reboot button in the top, and then you wait until the counter has reached zero. At zero, your lights will have rebooted. Of course, I've sped up this part of the movie. Let's now add a gateway to the network. If you want to use gateways, you need one for each network. You can decide not to connect all networks to a gateway, but then you would not be able to use the gateway features. You will also not be able to update those non-connected networks. Press on the gateway button and then click on what's the difference if you want to know the difference between having a gateway and not having a gateway. Then you press Add Gateway. The system requires a sync with the cloud. And once you have done that, the app opens your camera so that you can scan the QR code of the gateway. Once you hold the camera nearby the QR code on the gateway, it will start updating the gateway. Updating the gateway takes about 15 minutes if the firmware needs to be renewed. If there is already a new firmware on board, then updating the gateway is much quicker because it just needs to load the project data into the gateway. From here you can also remove the gateway. In this screen you can see the details about the gateway and the Zigbee channel of the network, the network time server. You can change the NTP server if you like to. In this project I have two networks, one with a gateway and one without a gateway. You can see the difference with those icons. Let's enter the one with the gateway. And let me show you how to add Zigbee only lights from the first generation into a group. These Zigbee only devices were sold from 2018 until 2020 approximately. So this really applies to older luminaires. You need to press the add lights and then you need to wait for the Bluetooth scan to finish. You might see those lights if they have already got the latest firmware, but these lights are not Bluetooth capable due to missing Bluetooth security keys. So you shouldn't press the blinking button. Don't add the lights from here. You should press on cannot find all lights over here. Here you can see the first generation lights that I'm talking about. I'm now blinking them to show you that they do respond to that. But when you try to add them, it will fail the lights will stop responding and you can no longer deploy settings to the lights. So I really recommend you to resist the temptation of pressing add and just press can't find all lights right away. And here is the confirmation that the system was enabled to assign the lights. So press cannot find all lights and start discovering. You need to make sure that the lights are powered in reach of the network and that they have been power cycled. Now you can start discovering the lights and observe the lights. When they are discovered, they will dim down. The left one dims down and the right one also dims. This is a visual feedback that the lights have been added to the Zigbee network. They have all been found 
and the app also shows that the counter goes to 5. You stop the discovery. And now the system will fetch the light information, which basically means that it's trying to figure out what type of lights were found. The app then shows you a summary of the discovered lights. And you can assign the light or you can discover for more over here. You eventually create a zone. You name the zone. And now you can add the lights. You will see that it starts discovering again, which is the Bluetooth discover method. But once it has finished, you will see that the lights have appeared. This time with their normal name and a light number instead of their MAC address. I have selected all and added them. If we press on the information button, then you can see the device name and you can also see that the deployment has never been done yet. Which makes sense because the lights have been freshly added to the system. Therefore the exclamation mark and the redeploy settings button. This shows the desired information that should be written into the luminaire. You can fix this by simply deploying the settings. Let's go into the control section and add the sensors. As these lights don't have an integrated sensor and they are part of a zone, we use the daylight sensor. The black spot makes it easy to recognize that it's a daylight sensor. Let's add the sensor and select next. Then we need to press the button in the front. This activates the sensor. And again, we need to pay attention to the blinking of the LED on the sensor. When it blinks two times, it means that the sensor has been successfully added. Due to the fact that the gateway is connected, it will take about 14 seconds to get feedback in the app. Due to the fact that this is a daylight sensor, you can only add this one to a zone. So you need to select the zone and then press assign. If you had aborted this step, you will find your sensor as an unassigned controls in the network overview page and you can still add it to a zone from there. As shown before, when you add the sensor to the group, the pop-up automatically appears on the screen showing you to choose the behavior. I set the occupancy and daylight sensing for this group and now I navigate back. And you can see that the behavior has changed to area auto on, auto off with daylight regulation. And in here I can change all the values to the desired levels. So the task level, when you enter the, the room, the light goes to this level. Then the whole time is how long will the level stay. Even if you have left, so this uh, for example 5 minutes. So you enter, the light goes to 100%, then you leave, it stays there for 5 minutes. The background goes to 7%, which means the light dimmed down to 7% and there is a prolonged time of 1 minute. It stays there for 1 minute. And then it goes to vacant, which is uh, 0%. We now need to deploy the settings. You might notice that there is this orange dot for daylight sensor calibration. Let's just ignore it for the moment because we first have to deploy. We do the calibration afterwards. I noticed that inversing the order sometimes causes the daylight regulation not to work properly. So first deploy and do the daylight calibration when everything is ready. Because I'm now using a gateway, and as mentioned before, deployment via the gateway takes much longer, about one minute per light. So I'm going to speed up this part of the video as well. As you can see it has failed, and you can already guess why that is. I had blinked those lights before the discovery via the gateway. I stated that this shouldn't be done, and this is the reason why. To fix it, I need to power cycle those lights, and then do the deployment again. I navigate back to check if I can communicate with the lights by using the test feature. 
I press the test button here and I turn on and off the group. I see that the lights are reacting, which is a positive thing. It gives me confidence that I will now be able to deploy the settings. Let's now also do the daylight calibration. I need to go into the zone and then I press got it after I have read the instructions. I set the desired light level. And then I need to press the calibrate button. And again, this takes 6 minutes, so don't change anything to the light level and wait until it has finished. Let me also show you how the schedules are working. You need to press create a schedule. Then you give the schedule a name, for example, turn on in the morning. Then you select the days at which you would like the schedule to run. And of course the time. Then you tap add new action and you select the group that needs to react to the schedule. And then you press apply. Now you configure the group action when the schedule triggers. Lights in this group will go on. For the meeting room, I also want the lights to go on. When you're done, you press save. Because we have now added a gateway, we can also invite users. If you press invite users, you can type in an email. And then select the group that this person should be able to control. Press disable or enable all to quickly disable or enable all the groups. Once you press the invite button, that person will receive an invitation email from the system. Now let's move to the portal and see what options we have over there. As you can see here, my project is located over there and it's mentioned that the type is connected because there is a gateway attached to it. I can also archive projects from here. And when you do that, it appears in the archived projects list. From here, you can unarchive the project and delete it. I activate the project again and enter it. When entering a connected project, you land in the monitoring screen. From there you can see the energy consumption. For now it's empty because I've just created this project. So be aware of this when you create your own project. Energy data will only populate after a few days. You can download the data in CSV format by pressing the Create Energy Report button. You can see the health status of various devices as well. Degraded light signifies that lights burned over 80% of its lifetime. Luminaire failure indicates that something is wrong with the driver or LED connection. The light control page allows you to control the lights remotely. Please note that the on-off status of the portal might not be reflecting the real life status where the lights could be switched on or off by a sensor or a switch. Select scene 1 starts scene 1. Select scene 2 starts scene 2. And the auto button starts the chosen on-off behavior again, turning the lights on at task level. And of course, you can dim the lights with the slider. Lights scheduling is similar to what you can see in the app. From here you can create schedules. Let's create a schedule to see how that works. In this example, I'm making a schedule for the weekend. 
where at seven o'clock lights in the group light from the first generation are turning off and also the lights in meeting room one to three are turning off. To save it, I press the create button. The schedule has now been created. The project update screen shows no updates for the moment because everything was already updated. But if there are any updates available, you can see that there. An all updates button in the top of the screen shows you the available updates for all the projects that you have access to. You can press the update all button to update all your projects. Be careful with that because you need all your lights and gateways to be powered and reachable, of course. Then the demand response. That is something that is only uh, exclusively used in North America. When enabled, the system can receive demand response events from the utility or grid operator, and they can apply the appropriate lighting control section based on the event type, duration, and severity. The system setup page allows you to create your network and navigate through your network. When you create a network, it will also appear in the app. And in here, you can see the Zigbee channels. You can create new networks, and imagine that I'd like to create multiple networks with different Zigbee networks. I would need to create multiple networks and see what channels they get from the system. And in the end, I just need to throw away all the networks with the wrong Zigbee channel number. And in this way, I have a little bit of flexibility to choose my channels. Unfortunately, there is no option currently to select your own channel when you create a network. So I think this is the best alternative that I can propose right now. I now created three networks, one with channel 25, another one with 11, and a third one with channel 20. Then the user management tab. Here I can see the experts that are assigned to the project. I can invite users and I can invite experts. Then we go to the installation reports. From here I can generate a new report. And this report contains information about the system itself. You can see the project details, the experts, the users, the gateway information, group parameters, group structure, and the light model overview. And light information contains details about the model, the MAC address, and the firmware version of the devices. And the last screen is the project information screen where you can find all the details about the project, its name, the type, the address, and so on. You can also make changes here and eventually choose a project picture. One thing I didn't show you in the installation setup was that you can enter a network. And in the top, you can see if a gateway is connected to the internet. You can also see other gateway related details here. From here, you can also navigate back to the group and see all the details of those lights that are inside the group. And the controls that are embedded in the group. You can also edit the names of the zones and delete it. You cannot delete a group or zone when there are devices in it. You first need to delete them. In the top of the screen, you can see a question mark, and from there you can go to the documentation section. Here you can go to the download section and get all kinds of relevant information about your devices and controls. And you can uh, consult installation manuals, etc. Very informative and interesting information. At the bottom of the web portal, you can also choose the documentation of older versions of the system. 
I invite you to navigate around a little bit and discover all the information that you can find in this portal. Now let's close everything up and clean up the project, meaning that I have now finished this presentation. I'm going to delete all the devices from the network and also delete the project. First I need to go back into my projects, back into my groups and turn off the group. That's what I always do because then it's easier to identify the lights when they are deleted. Because when they are deleted they turn on. These lights are the first generation Zigbee lights and are deleted by the gateway. When you are deleting the devices via the gateway, you need to make sure that you delete lights that are far away from the gateway first, and then you work your way towards the lights that are nearby the gateway. This is to prevent that the gateway can no longer reach the light and can no longer delete it. Now I have switched them off. Then I go back into the lights in the network. And from here I can blink the lights to check if I got the right one. So this is the correct one. I'm going to delete this light from the system. That one is most far away from the gateway. So delete. Now you will see that the light, once it's deleted, will turn on to full brightness. You can see that now. And then the other light over there. I'm going to show you what to do if the deletion somehow failed. You can reset the lights with a U dimmer switch. In order to reset, you need to press the top button and the bottom button simultaneously for at least 10 seconds. And then you need to pay close attention to the LED on that U dimmer switch. It starts blinking orange and at the same time the light will also blink. If you don't see that your light is blinking, but the orange LED on the U dimmer switch was blinking, you need to release the buttons on the U dimmer switch immediately, because you would be resetting a different light. In my case, the correct light was blinking, and that means that the light was successfully reset. You see that I'm now trying to delete the light from the app, and you will notice that it will fail, because that light no longer exists in the network. In such a case, you can force remove the light from the list. Be very conscious what you're doing, because the light will be permanently gone from that project. And if you had forgotten to reset the light after all, then you can still do that later. You might need to power cycle a light if you want to add it to a new network again. Resetting the light has failed, as I explained before, because I had already reset it with the U dimmer switch. So I can simply remove it. The app proposes me to factory reset the light, if I haven't done that yet. If I would reset it via the app in this screen, the app would use Bluetooth to try to reset via Bluetooth. For sure this only works with light that have Bluetooth capabilities. So not those first generation older lights. In this case I can just press cancel. And now the light has disappeared from the list. And now I can proceed deleting all the other lights from this network as well. But now I'm going to show you a little trick on how to remove the light from a project in a different way. So let me first remove the gateway from this project, because this trick only works for networks without a gateway. There are three networks here. So I enter the network that contains the gateway. I click on the gateway info. Then I press remove gateway. When I do that you should observe the blue LEDs on the gateway. You can see them in the bottom of the screen.
the network connectivity and internet connectivity indicators will turn off. Only the power LED remains on. This is a visual confirmation for you to know that the gateway has also been properly removed. You should only do this when your gateway is connected to the internet, so that the cloud knows that this gateway has been removed from the network. In the meantime, I have entered that same network on another telephone and acquired a lock on that network on that other phone. When I go back into my app on this phone and I open the project, you will still be able to enter the project but the network is locked. It tells it's locked on another device. From here I can now press the delete button and it asks me if I'm sure that I want to delete the network. I select that I have read the consequences and now I press continue. I will be able to reset all my lights via their Bluetooth connection. This only works for lights that have a Bluetooth interface, so don't try this with the first generation Zigbee lights, because it will simply not work. During this procedure, the system will start searching for the lights that are using the same Bluetooth credentials. And when they are found, they will dim to a minimum level. For you, that is an indication that their signal was received by the phone. If you now press the reset button, it will start resetting the lights one by one. Do not move around during this action. Never press the button in the top of your screen that states done before you have finished resetting all your lights because once you press the done button, your network will be permanently removed. If you had accidentally pressed this button and not all your lights were reset, then you will need to go through a specific mode called save mode and that's a little bit annoying. So if you haven't finished, I advise you just to kill your app and then restart the app. In this way you can resume the reset activity. The network will be marked as being deleted. Here you can clearly see that. When re-entering the network, it restarts the resetting procedure again. It starts scanning for the lights. But there are no more lights. I can just press the button. It asks me for confirmation. Are you sure you're done? Yes I am. And now the network has been deleted and all the lights were also reset. The project still contains a couple of networks but I don't really have to remove them one by one, even if there would be control devices in there. Because I can also just archive the project via the portal and from the archive project list I can also delete the project. So I press actions, archive, yes I archive, then I go to my archive projects and from here I press delete. And when you do that, your project is gone. Let me now go back to the app and we refresh the page by going into a different section of the app, for example the about section, and navigate back. Then you can see that the project has also disappeared. Let's now create a new project and pretend that some of the lights are unreachable for whatever reason. They could have been captured by a different device or network, and I can no longer reset that network. So I have to basically steal the lights back. And there is a specific way of doing that. You have to enter the lights into a special save mode, as mentioned previously. And in this part of the instruction movie, I'm going to show you how to put lights into save mode. In the meantime, I'm building a small project where I'm going to add those lights. And two of the lights I'm going to add, and I pretend as if the other lights cannot be found.
I first add those two lights. So there they are. Those power balance recessed. Let's blink them and then add them. The two other lights over there are invisible in the scan list because they are part of another network. The app has an option to display those lights that are part of another network. In order to display that, I need to press I still can't find all lights. Then I press search for lights. It's now going to scan for all the lights that exist in proximity of the telephone, but that are not part of the network. And as you can see, they exist over here. And because they already are part of a different network, I cannot just reset them from here. This is a security measure, because if it would be possible, I could also just reset lights from different projects elsewhere in the world. That would be very bad of course. So this is a protection mechanism. You cannot reset lights nor blink them. In order to reset them, you will need to have physical access to the power of those lights and put them in safe mode. Only then you can reset them. In this suitcase, there is a power button that I'm going to use to power cycle the lights five times. So here we go. Turn the lights off and wait for at least 10 seconds. The lights that are on the left hand side have a built in sensor like SNS or SNH210 and would need to be put in safe mode by observing the orange or red LED on that sensor. The lights on the right hand side don't have a built in sensor but use a wireless driver. Observe the lights with the wireless driver to turn on. And when they turn on, I immediately cut the power and wait for about 5 seconds before turning the power on again. I repeat this 4 times. And the fifth time, I'm keeping the lights on. I will then have to wait about 20 seconds for the lights to completely start up before pressing the reset button in the app. You should never try to blink the lights when they are in safe mode because I have noticed that it might disturb the reset procedure. So don't blink, just wait 20 seconds and then press the reset button to reset the light. As you can see it works. For this light we do the same. It is unable to reset because it might be still starting up. But we just try it again. It should be working now. And as I have now reset those lights, I am able to add them to the project again. They respond to blinking and I can add them. I always use the test button to see if I can re control the lights, and when it's all working, I press done. And of course, if possible, always try to delete the lights properly. Turn the lights off via the app, and then delete them from within the app and see that they are turning on. That is a visual confirmation that the light has properly been reset. Let's also reset the sensors, so that I can use them in another project again. I press the button in the back for about 8 seconds. You should see that the red and green LED are blinking 2 times. That is important. If they didn't blink 2 times, just release the reset button and do it again. Here is another sensor. I'm doing the same thing. I press the button in the back and I wait a couple of seconds. And see that they are blinking 2 times. They have now been reset. 
I didn't film it, but I can explain that uh, resetting the North American SWS 200 switch is similar to resetting the sensor. You press a paper clip in the reset hole and a red LED indicator should appear. We have now reached the end of this instruction video and I hope you have learned a lot today. Let me now summarize some of the new features that were introduced since my previous video. Signify has released a new app for Intrac Pro. This app version is 3.10.6. And this app has uh, quite some new features like the Bulby chatbot. This chatbot is completely new. It is uh, powered by AI and you can now use it to ask real questions and you get uh, proper answers and help. In this example, I asked the chatbot, how come that some updates of the project settings fill all the time? And as you can see, it creates a nice response. As you can see, the hyperlinks it creates are now clickable as well. And this example shows you the hyperlink towards the knowledge base article. Another question is that the network is locked and how do I reset all its lights now? Some of the answers are quite extensive. For the moment there is no possibility to create any backup or send the response to yourself. So if you like to save your response, you could take some screenshots for example. And now I wonder if I can speak to someone. A nice response is generated. And now it guides me towards the customer contact center. And again, there are some hyperlinks in here. You can click on them. And as you can see, it opens the web page toward the internet page where you can find the phone numbers. In this example, I click on Canada. And there you can find the phone number for Canada. There are a couple of different contact forms. Don't use the contact form, but use the service form instead if you like to raise a ticket. Once you open the service form, make sure to fill in all the required details. At the bottom of the page, you can leave some attachments if you prefer. As you can see, there is a hyperlink towards the Interact Pro documentation as well. It opens the web page on your mobile phone, which could be a little bit small. At the bottom of the page, you can also find the various versions that are available for the releases. And let's now go to a normal web page. This is the portal. You can click on the documentation, and that brings you to exactly the same web page that was shown on the mobile phone before. Let's now close everything go back to the app and show you another feature, which is the manual on, manual off with daylight regulation. This feature is part of the light behavior. And in order to get there, you need to go into the controls tab, tap on the light behavior, and then you select area manual on, manual off with DDR. And then you click on the pen. In the top of the screen, you can see a graphic indicating the daylight regulation. Of course, don't forget to deploy your settings when you're done. And while navigating back, I show you some screenshots from the notification center and from the in-app notifications. The notifications typically appear when there is a new system release and it gives you information on what to expect during an upcoming release. Let's now move on to the users. There are two user roles, experts and users. Experts can add devices, commission, etc. 
users only control lights in groups that they have been given access to in projects with a gateway. This part of the video shows you how to invite an expert. And below you can invite users. Inviting users is only possible when you have a gateway connected to your system and then you can give the user a certain permission. When you click on the invite button, the person will receive an email with the invitation. Let's now move to the portal again and have a look at a new feature displaying the Zigbee channel of a network. You need to open the project and click on the light bulbs. And over there you can see the overview of your networks with their Zigbee channel. Via the web portal you can also create your own new projects. This allows you to do some offsite programming already. Let's create a project real quickly. While doing this, I can explain what can be found inside a project. Projects have networks, and a network contains up to 200 Zigbee nodes and up to 50 Zigbee green power devices, like switches and battery powered sensors. Groups reside inside a network, and up to 40 lights and 5 Zigbee green power devices can be grouped together for lighting control. I have now created a network. You typically use the name of the location of the network, for example the first floor. Inside the network you can create groups. Typically you use group names like meeting room, office space, corridor, etc. Inside the groups you can also create zones. A zone is a subgroup used for daylight regulation and for tying lights together for scene setting. Lights that need to do daylight regulation, you typically put them inside zones. Let's now create a group. Let's call it meeting room. And also add a new zone in there. Window. We have now created a new project and set up all the groups and zones. Let's now move back to the app again and show you another feature, which is the orange dots. Orange dots are indicators to mention that something still needs to be done. Most often it's inside controls areas where you might need to deploy the settings. Orange dots or exclamation marks also appear at light level when the light needs troubleshooting or deployment. The dots can also indicate that daylight calibration is still needed, and so on. Another topic is the locked network feature. Let's create a new network. Once you have created the network, you can see a pop-up message showing that you have got the lock of this network. You can unlock it by clicking the little lock symbol. Once you have acquired the lock, then this network is accessible only for you. You are the only person that can make changes in the network, only with this particular phone. This means that you will always have to unlock when you're done commissioning. Let's try to create a new network while we have a lock. The system doesn't allow you to do that. The system proposes to unlock your previous network and once you did that, you can create your new network. When we enter this second network, it locks that network. You need to unlock it if you want to do something else again. If you move in and out a network without unlocking, then you can see this orange dot. And this orange dot goes all the way back to the project overview. So when you see an orange dot, you really need to unlock your network. The system doesn't even allow you to log out of your system. You first need to go back into your project and unlock the network. 
You can do this by sliding to the left and press the lock symbol. Only when all networks are unlocked, you are able to log out. Let's now have a look at the process of requesting access to the system. You can request access in two ways. Via the portal by pressing on the request access button and in the app by pressing on the same button. Let's fill in an email address. Then press the request button. Go to your email inbox and check your email. In your inbox, you will find an email with a hyperlink that brings you to the web page where you can set your password. Now you can fill in your password and then press next. Over here you fill in your personal details. And you press next. You have now created an account. When you check your email again, you see a confirmation that you have created an account. When you go to the login page, you can now log in using that email address and password which you just created. After accepting the terms of use, you can start using the portal and the app. Let's now follow the same process, but then via the app. Once you have filled in your email address, you can press on the request button. You can now check your email and you will find the same type of message where you can press the hyperlink and choose your password. And after that, you fill in your name details and press next. We can now use that email address and password to log into the app as well. Once you have logged in, you can start creating your projects by pressing on the Create Project button. There you fill in all your details. You choose the project name, you choose the project type, then Save, and when you press Next, it will automatically fill in the address details for you. Now imagine that you want to delete your project from within the app. That is not possible. You cannot slide to the left and delete your projects. You will need to go to the portal to do that. Go to sme.interact-lighting.com, then fill in your credentials and log in into the portal. From there, you can click on the three dot action menu next to the project and then press delete or archive. If you search for your archive projects, then you need to go to your archive projects over there. Before deleting the project, I want to show you what happens if you try to delete your account by pressing delete account in this page, while you still own a project. As you can see, you cannot delete the account because the project still exists. So if you need to delete your account, a reason could be that an expert would like to invite you as a user, then you would need to delete all your projects and only then you can delete your account. Once that is done, the expert can invite you as a user. I hope you have enjoyed this movie. See you in the next one.